All right, this is lesson 11.1.1. Uh, today, we're going to be learning about what it means to graph something like y equals the square root of a number. Oh, shoot, I'm in an inkler. Well, we'll have to fix that later, won't we? Anyways, uh, one of the things that you normally would have done had you been in classes, you would have gotten together in different groups, and we would have had you graph, each of you would have chosen to graph one of these, and we would work from that. Because you're not in a class, we're going to do this a little differently. I'm going to graph them for you, and then after I'm done with that, you will graph one yourself. So, the very first one here that we're going to do as a class, if I can get off my ink layer here, let's close that ink layer. Perfect. Let's get back on the regular screen. Wonderful. And we'll move this down to the next screen. We are going to graph for the very first one here, y equals the square root of x. Now, to do this, it might be easy to understand if you're seeing this on a xy chart. Now, we should all know in this class by now, this number inside here is called the discriminant. And we know we cannot take the square root of a, think about it for a minute, a negative number. So, the very first number we can actually start with is when x equals 0. When x equals 0, y obviously equals 0. When x equals 1, the square root of 1 is 1. If I were to choose the square root of 2, then I get some irrational number, a number that never ends and never repeats. 3 gives me the same kind of bad number. But I could go to 4, the square root of 4, and the square root of 4, as we all should know, is 2. The square root of 9 would be the next one. You might notice I'm choosing perfect squares, which gets me to an answer of 3. Now, as I try and graph that, when x is 0, y is 0, that point comes right here. x is 1, y is 1, that point should be right here. You might notice I'm pulling these numbers directly from my chart. When x is 4 y is 2, that number is right here, and when x is 9, y is 3, that number comes right there. If I connect the dots, makes this little curved line, that goes like so, that started at 0, right here on the, for your x-coordinates, again, because any of your x-coordinates that would be negative, anything over here where the x is negative would cause you get a domain error on your calculator. So these numbers cannot happen right here. Hopefully that makes that understandable. If that's understandable, then we can move on to our next page. The next page. We have the same thing except for it's the opposite. y equals negative square root of x. So we still plug in that 0, 0 point that we had before. The opposite of 0 is still 0. When we plug in 1 for x, y would be 1, but the opposite sign causes it to be a negative 1. So that comes right here. And then we get the square root of 4 would come down here and be negative 2 because of the opposite sign. And square root of 9 would be 3, but the opposite sign makes it a negative 3. As we connect the dots, we get a graph that looks like that. What should make sense it is the complete opposite of that graph. Hopefully you have no questions on why we got the opposite when we graphed y equals the negative square root of x. Next, what if we plug in a number like we take the square root of x plus 1? Well, here's what we get. We should know that the square root of x is this normal, starts at 0, goes up to 1, over to 2, and by the time it hits 3, it's up here, so on and so forth. That should make sense for had the problem been this right here. But at this point now, we're going to shift this because we've got plus 1. What the plus 1 does is it causes your y output here to always be increased by 1. So even though we plug in 0 for x, the y's go up 1. So if I can take this graph here and shift this up 1, everything shifted up 1 to this point. So 0, you might notice, when x is 0, y actually has an output of 1. If I plug in 1 for x, the square root of 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, that output is right here. 4, which would normally be 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 
square root of 9 is 3, plus 1 would be 4 is right there. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So, anytime you have a number on the outside of the square root, like that plus 1, the plus 1 means to shift it up 1. If this had been a minus something, that means we would shift it down, which leads us now to our next one. Our next one is the opposite square root of x minus 2. So, let's just do this here. Let's draw a normal square root, starting here at 0, going up to 1, to 2, to 3, and beyond, like so. And then let's shift this as we need to. So, the first shift is we're going to go minus 2. So, we take this one here, we're going to shift this down 2, 1, 2, to right there. But then what we're going to do is this thing says that it's the opposite square root of x. I probably should do the opposite first. Yep, you know what? Disregard what I just said because I did not do my order of operations very well. We're not going to shift down 2 right away because that wouldn't be correct. What we have to do is order of operations. So the mistake I made, or almost made, is I have to do the multiply before I do the subtract. So in order to do the opposite, we take the graph as we have shown before, and we're going to flip this. What the heck is going on there? Who knows? We'll figure it out. We're going to take this. Oh my goodness. Let's, oh, and I'm cloning. Let's delete you. Let's delete you. Thank you. I thought I was going to thank you. Delete. Thank you. And now, let's go down to flip. And we're going to flip up down. This, because it's the opposite, looks like so. Now we're going to shift our graph down 2. So I'll do this part second right there, the down 2. And this shifts down 2. So the graph will look like that. I hope I didn't make that too confusing for you. I hope everyone understood that. If not, you'll have questions for me tomorrow. Next one. We add a little something to this. Now, here we have x square root of x plus 2, and then we have minus 1. So, again, let's start with our base graph. Starts at 0, right here in the middle. 1, 2, 3, and beyond. There's our base graph. But, if you look at this part up here, the plus 2, we need to look at what number of x can cause the square root here to be 0, to get this starting point right here to be 0. And if we do that, we should all see that if x equals negative 2, that would cause the square root of negative 2 plus 2 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. That causes this whole chart to move over two spots to almost right there, right to there. So if it's inside the square root, it causes it to go the opposite direction. If you remember from your absolute value uh, lesson, we did the same thing. Then the minus 1, which is on the outside of that, causes us to move down 1. So again, anything not in the absolute value causes it to move up or down. Anything inside the absolute value causes it to move in the opposite direction that amount. I'll get rid of that little circle so we're not confused by it. Oh, goody, I'm cloning. Oh, I cloned again. Wow. Okay, forget the cloning on this one. Okay, took a short little pause there so I can get rid of those circles. That were bothering me. The final one example I will go through, which is similar to that one. If you think about this, I'll give you about five seconds here to think about it. The square root of x minus 1, what will happen there? What will the minus 1 cause us to shift? And then the plus 3, what will that do? So again, we start with our base. 1, 2, 3, and beyond. And what will the shift be? Think about that for a moment. And then, see if you've got this one. The x minus 1, it's going to take a positive 1 to zero out the square root part. So that's going to shift it 1 in the positive direction. Did everyone see that? We went from here, 1 over in the positive direction, in order to get the part here in the discriminant to cancel out. Then, the part that's on the outside of that, the plus 3, shifts that up 3 to right here. 
Had that been an opposite in front of that whole thing, everything, of course, would be flipped, but it wasn't, so that's where we're at. Hopefully that makes sense. So, to review it, x minus 1. The minus 1 part, because it was inside the discriminant, shifted the opposite. And the plus 3, which was on the outside, because it's on the outside, it shifts in the positive direction, going up and down. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to graph this one and bring it, and this will be what you'll hand in to make sure, kind of your notes for taking this to make sure you know what you're doing. You're going to do y equals the square root of x minus 3, and then on the outside of that, plus 5. I want that graphed. I want it graphed very neatly. And then I want you to include on that, okay? Include on that. Let's see, we are goal is supposed to, as a team, create a poster. We're not creating a poster. But you're going to remember that the main goal, you're going to, I'm reading right here, remember that the main goal of this activity is to determine what items a complete description of a graph must contain. Be sure to include everything you can. Be prepared to present your poster to the class. Remember, here at the bottom, remember to give reasons for all the statements you make. I want you to basically describe, if you're going to describe it to a younger person, describe how to graph this equation right here, how to graph it and what's going to happen. So if you put on an explanation, I would say you probably need four to five sentences, complete sentences, uh, to do a good job describing that. Some of you will write a little bit more. I love you people that do that. And uh, we will see you tomorrow in class. Have a good night.